Well, let's uh, let's get into to bow hunting for turkeys. That's why we're here today. Uh, Bring the archery den in. The experts know all about it. <laughs> Put you on the that. spot there, far from Logan. That. But uh, you brought a few things in to show us, and and let's just talk about uh, how it's different. You know how it's different hunting a turkey with a bow than it is hunting with a gun, sure. and how you do it. I mean, the award-winning Tennessee Wildcast is on the air with the latest on hunting, fishing, boating, wildlife watching, and all things outdoors. Make welcome your host, drummer and outdoor expert novice, Jason Harmon. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome again to this edition of Tennessee Wildcast. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for watching and listening. We're going to have a fun show for you today. Turkey season is right around the corner. Oh, yeah. Mr. Don King helped me co-host today. You bet, Jason. And we're hey, excited. I'm excited to have uh, have Logan in the house today as opposed to the Zoom thing. You know, we, yes, we did that like about this time last year, I think. And, yeah. Uh, and uh, but and it was fun, but man, it's just so much better in person. Yeah, Mr. Logan White from the Archery Den is with us today. Uh, excited to have you. We're going to talk turkey hunting, one of his passions. Plus, he loves to hunt deer, elk, mule deer, all kinds of stuff. All over the place. We've been talking before the show. We got some stories to tell. <laughs> but great to have you. Yes, sir. Great to be here. Thank y'all for having me again. Looking forward to the conversation. Yeah. So yeah, we had a pandemic, and we're still kind of in that pandemic, I guess. But uh, had them on Zoom, and that was a fun show. But it's better to be in person. That's right. We're keeping our distance here. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Six but, foot. Yeah. But anyway, uh, Logan, tell us about the Archer Den. Tell us about yourself, and uh, and and we'll introduce you to the to the folks listening and watching out there. Yeah. So uh, my name is Logan White. Um, I own the Archer Den in Franklin, Tennessee. I'm also a fireman in Spring Hill. Um, own a media company as well, One Percent Media. I'm a father. I'm a husband. Um, those are my two, the, the biggest things I have in my life. I'm happy. Um, I just try to be a good dad and a good husband. Yeah, awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, um, uh, the Archery Den is located in Franklin, right? Yes, sir. And um, uh, uh, it's a pretty cool little shop you got there. Man, we're we're a little shop, down and dirty bow hunting only. Um, you're not going to find all the other gear we're archery and archery only i got a great tech um matt eddie store manager in my tech and then we got another employee audrey she does um she has figured out how to tune arrows oh yeah better than most guys wow other women i know <laughs> all right. she does all my arrow builds so she's awesome um we are top 100 dealer in the world with matthews we have prime um both here from america or the United States, so we're real happy with them. They're both great bows, and they sell themselves really. Got yeah. a nice uh, range in the back too, yeah, so we, that's that's really handy to yeah, have. We got a, like a 10, 10 yard indoor um, testing range mm -hmm. for for guys who want to shoot the demos and come in and paper tune and that kind of thing. We can mm -hmm. set you up back there, and we can we can help you out. Yeah, if you hadn't seen the, sh the videos we did last year during deer season, uh, we put together some archery tuning videos and getting your bow set up and, and all that fun stuff. We shot some video and got that posted out there last deer right, season at right. the shop. So that was awesome. That yeah, was fun. That was a fun night. And uh, we got a lot of stuff out there for you. So if you didn't get to see that, go check it out. But, um, but yeah, so, I mean, you got a lot of cool things going on. Uh, like you said, I think that's awesome. But, you know, being a dad and, and uh, a father and a husband is, is the number one there. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, that's important. And, and the then, shop is kind of in the same vicinity as the uh, Williamson County Ag yeah. and Expo Center out there. Yep, so right just across the street, kind of give you a visual of where the where the shop is. Easy and, to uh, find. Yeah, and it's in and, uh, and uh, the other range is right out there as well. Just I mean, just yeah, the to, state range, and which is awesome. Um, to have that right there. Yeah. Um, just a couple blocks away from you. Guys, yeah. Right. It? Right. It's, it's right across the street at the end of the Ag Center parking lot. Um, open from sun up till sundown free the state owns it uh no broadheads please and then um <laughs> yeah. it goes from 10 to 60 park at the gate walk in and and have fun man yeah so it's a it's a great great thing y'all have got there for us yeah that's cool i know uh mr crawford don crawford put a lot into that he sure did. a lot of other people have worked hard to get that going and in place so that's cool well it's it's turkey season i wanted to uh, remind people that um the Young Sportsman Hunt this year is March 27, 28, so that'll be here before you know uh -huh. it. Uh, and then the shotgun archery season for, for everyone else is April 3rd through May 16th. So those are the dates this year. It's It'll be here. I mean, it's right around the corner. We're excited about it. Um, we'll, I'll go ahead and just 
touch on the regulations so people remember it, it's changed a little bit. Um, one bearded turkey per day, not to exceed three per season. It used to be four, but now it's three. Mm -hmm. Made a few adjustments, and then there's a few few more uh, uh, things you have to think about in different counties down south, so Middle Tennessee. So just make sure you check your guide. That's uh, on the on the website tnwildlife.org. You can go check that out, uh, or pick one one of your guides up at the local store and and flip the pages there. But Always make sure you check your guide or download what, Don? The app, the TWRA <laughs> on the go app. Yeah. And all that stuff's right there in your hand or your pocket. Yeah. That's a must have. Yeah. That app's great. Check in, whatever. Look up the rules. I love that thing. Tag before you drag. It's all right there in, yep. your, in your hand. I'm glad you said that because that's something that you have to do with turkeys. That is, yeah, that's yep. new now, too. Yeah. So. so tag before you drag. Uh, that goes for turkeys, deer, all your big game animals. So that's yeah, good. It's a, it's a plus. And, Honestly, I I like going down to three. I, I wouldn't mind going down to two myself. <laughs> uh, I mean, especially yeah. down there in, in Middle Tennessee in the south, man. Mm -hmm. I had farms I used to have piles of turkeys on, and now we've got a few here and there. Yeah. So it that ain't a bad rule to put into place. Yeah. yeah I think, you know, it, it was a good move, and, and we'll see how it goes and can experiment there and, and see what needs to happen as, uh, as we move forward. So. Yep. That's Definitely. Right. Well, let's uh, let's get into to bow hunting for turkeys. That's why we're here today. Uh, bring the archery den in. The experts know all about it. <laughs> Put you on the that. spot there, far from Logan. That. But uh, you brought a few things in to show us, and and let's just talk about uh, how it's different. You know how it's different hunting a turkey with a bow than it is hunting with a gun, sure. and how you do it. I mean, first let's I guess start with equipment. What what would your choice be for a bow, and and how are we going to set it up? Um, and I'm you brought a, a few with you if you want to yeah, show some. I'm a compound guy, so this this is a brand new bow. It's not set up or anything. This is going to be the Nexus Prime. Um, but for me, the setup with archery equipment is a little bit different. Yeah. Um, a lot of guys with archery are going to try to hunt them from a ground blind um, because turkeys – you're not going to get away with anything with drawing right know, yeah um, especially out in the open um i know a few guys that have done it i got lucky and done it myself um but that was the way i set up it's the only reason i got it done um i personally there are a lot of guys um, and girls that change their bow setup a little bit they may take the weight down so drawing um isn't quite a drastic move where it's a little bit smoother I leave mine set up the exact same. Um, I shoot 3D tournaments. I shoot deer. I shoot elk. I shoot mule deer. Whatever I'm shooting, mm -hmm. I'm shooting with the exact same setup. For a turkey, you're like, why are you shooting the same boat? Yeah, it's going to be a little <laughs> over the top, but I want to get used to that equipment. Consistency, I guess. Exactly. I don't want to have to change between seasons and recite in because every little thing that you change on this is going to change the way that bow shoots either up or down okay or some left and right but for the most part it's going to be an up and down change because you're let's say my elk arrow is 510.9 grains in uh, total weight if i go to a turkey arrow in the threes bow's going to be super fast so my arrow is going to hit a little high okay. so you're going to you're constantly going to be tinkering, mm -hmm. and once we get my bow right and dialed in, <laughs> I don't want to mess it up. Yeah. So that's I don't change anything. I know there are people that do. I don't. That was that was my thought. You know, I, I've never hunted turkeys with a bow, uh, but I thought, well, if your draw is 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 still the same, that's a lot of impact that you probably don't need, or do you need it for a turkey? Do you need that that hard of an impact? I personally believe there's no such thing as too much of that. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's <laughs> get her done. Let's kill it. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, do you need it? No. Um, not trying to be a nerd, but it's like 46 pound, square pounds of pressure to kill a whitetail. Okay. Right? So a 70-pound bow, depending on the arrow, obviously. Um, the last one I did, 70-pound bow with the arrows we did the calculations on. It was 96 pounds. Okay. So there's plenty to kill that it's animal. It's going to turn flips. And way extra. I, like I said, it's not a bad thing to change. I just don't like to change because I don't want to change my whole setup. Gotcha. I want to have one sight tape, everything ready to rock and roll. So I'm practicing shooting everything with the same bow. So I'm, I'm continually getting better 
at shooting the bow. Yeah. So you talk about the the ground blind. I'm sure it's it's. I know what it is. It's a lot harder to draw back sitting in a, in a ground blind. Yep. You know, so you need to practice that, right? Sure. Get used yeah, to that. You, you've got to practice. Um, you know, everybody wants to walk out to the range and shoot standing up perfectly at the target uh-huh. yeah that very rarely happens <laughs> even never, like any type of hunting even so a deer in a tree stand yeah the way i practice i'll practice shooting from my knees i'll practice shooting out of a seat i'll practice shooting elevated um just getting prepared for any type situation you know here you're east tennessee definitely we have some hills so you might get a little uphill downhill shot mm-hmm. not quite as bad as you would out west um so pra- i practice those as well um the best I can. I mean, it's still kind of difficult to get that kind of terrain change, that elevation change up and down. But I practice for any type of situation I may get in. Turkeys, elk, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, you got to practice for sure. Mm-hmm. So um, let's uh, let's touch on, on uh, the other bow you brought, uh, crossbow. So if you were going to um, say you want to hunt with a crossbow, is, yeah. is there any other setup or any other – thoughts on that a crossbow you're not going to change the weight the crossbow yep. set the way it's going to stay the same yeah. um they're super fast they're super friendly easy to shoot see and you may not need a ground blind with this one right no um not necessarily you can definitely you can definitely get it done from the ground if you're set up right um that's going to be the key is and turkeys are so unpredictable but if you have an idea of which way he may come in I like, I'm a little different. I like to set up behind trees. So this microphone would be a tree between the way that I feel that turkey or whatever's coming in. So when he comes to me, I can draw and then I can just lean out or I can wait until he passes and stick him when he passes. Yeah. Um, That's how I've got it done with a bow out of a blind. That's cool. Completely lucky. Um, so that's, I mean, that's how I would set up with a bow outside of a blind or a crossbow. Um, crossbows are, they are very deadly, um, very fast. A lot of people are going to them now that a bunch of states have got on board with the legalizing them. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's nothing wrong with them. Just practice with them. They're not a rifle. They're not a rifle. They're not a shotgun. Right. So I tell anybody that comes in the store, you still need to practice, not just sight it in and put it up. Um, we lose a lot more wildlife where I got at with a crossbow than we do a regular bow. Mm. Um, farther shots, and sometimes these bows are so fast, sometimes you don't get proper broadhead deployment on a mechanical broadhead. Hmm. Okay. I personally like a fixed blade broadhead out of a crossbow. That's just my opinion. Yeah. And we we make crossbow shooters at where I outfit in Kansas. We make them shoot a fixed blade broadhead out of a crossbow. Okay. That makes sense because it's too fast to, for it to uh, for it to expand, or it's it's there before it's our you know before it right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've I've had some good deer shot in Kansas um, with a crossbow, and when we finally find the deer, we can put that broadhead closed straight through the exit hole and that exit hole should be the size of this microphone Mm -hmm. it shouldn't be that small yeah so um crossbows are definitely awesome i mean a lot of guys shoot them they they kill a lot of wildlife you just got to in my opinion get it sighted in with a field tip and then tune it with your broadhead and when i say tune it you it's a crossbow so you're not really tuning it you're re-sighting it in with a fixed blade broadhead yeah that's just the way i tell guys at the store and the way i work i run my my place in kansas yeah so well with a crossbow you you've got some other advantages i think you know you got that scope there's yeah. a scope on that one you brought in today uh that compact design of that one is, is amazing compared to some of those crossbows that yeah. you know the earlier ones for sure so that was a matthews um missions crossbow sub one um extremely fast for those listening it's only about Maybe 16 inches wide at the widest? Uh, it's part. a little bit smaller than that. Smaller? Oh, mm-hmm. 14, 15 maybe? Yeah. And then when it's cocked, it's even smaller. Ah. Uh-huh. So, um, but check your regs because some places, some of these scopes and stuff you can buy now, um, they have electronics in them. 
they have magnif- magnification in them, and there oh, are yeah. some states that you cannot run a magnifying scope on a crossbow, um, and they are hard to find. We hmm. had a customer come in on an elk hunt. He dropped it and broke it, or he fell and broke it. It took us forever to oh, find man. a one-power, non-adjustable crossbow scope. Wow. So just check your regs and make sure that you're you're right on what you've got and the equipment you're taking out. Cool. Well, let's talk about the broadheads you brought. And, yeah. And if you can hold them up, people watching can sure. see them on that camera there. But uh, that's the fixed blade you talked about. Yes, sir. You prefer. Yes, sir. Um, this is a G5 Montec M3. Um, it's solid. There's no vents in the blades. Okay. Um, so it's a solid piece of metal, and it's all cut out of the same piece of metal. My favorite fixed blade broadhead um, that's easily accessible and price price friendly um yeah solid they're going to shoot a little different than your field tip so when you get broadheads you need to take one you need to go shoot it just to make sure okay it's low left and readjust to that broadhead you have to um because they're going to shoot a little different yeah. especially a fixed Definitely. blade that's why people yeah. don't use fixed blades like they used to when muzzy and all those mm-hmm. were you know um because there is a little extra work into it they don't fly quite as good as a field tip so that's why they we definitely sell seven to one on the um mechanicals compared to the fixed blade but that's why well show us a few of those I, you brought a couple different models yeah. in here yep um this is a rage hyperdermic it's a two blade so there's two two blades that deploy on impact okay. so when it hits when it flying, it looks like this. Right. As soon as it hits, it looks like this. The bigger, mm. open, nasty cutting diameter, um, big hole, um, good blood trail, where the the fixed blade, it's a lot smaller cutting diameter, right? Okay, yeah. But the thing, the thing about mechanical, well, and the, hold on, we'll go back to that. Sure. Um, this is a four blade broadhead. Okay. It's a true glow. I personally shoot whitetail, antelope, that kind of thing with these turkeys. Um, I really like this broadhead. I've killed a few animals with them, and it's it's pretty good. Yeah. It's, it does it does its job. Um, but a fixed blade and a mechanical. Mechanical is going to give you a lot bigger cutting diameter for sure. But a fixed blade is going to be stronger. So on big game animals. Um, me personally, mule deer and up. I shoot a, a fixed blade broadhead. Um, the blades are thicker. It's solid. It can cut through bone, um, bust through bone. It can get through all the hide and the fat really well. So there's definitely pros to both, mm-hmm. and there's cons to both. So whether it's um, a, a crossbow or a compound, you're you're gonna shoot the the fixed blade when it comes to those larger animals. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yep. So on a turkey, mm-hmm. uh, we got one there behind you, and and we'll try to point out some spots. But where would you place place a shot on a turkey, and to to be successful? Because I mean, you know, with a shotgun, you're shooting at the head. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's how you kill them normally. But it's a lot harder to hit that with a bow. <laughs> yes, yes, um, for sure. Because one thing, the turkey's head never stops moving the whole time. Right. That thing's just exactly going and going and going. So with a shotgun, you got a little more pellets out there yeah um but on a turkey in the perfect world he's broadside standing up first off if he's in strut let him shake out just just let him come out of strut okay and shoot him when he's down like shoot him when he's out of strut strut can change the way your landmark on that bird looks it hasn't changed its location that wing bone and the body is still connecting the same spot, uh-huh. but it looks like it's in a different area. Right. So you're going to miss those vitals. I could see that when they blow up. You yeah. know, it's they've got right. Yeah. Um. So on a turkey broadside shot, this, this bird's standing up right, about two inches above the leg. Those vitals are going to sit low. So when that bird's standing up, got the head way up here, and the neck comes down on the body. Okay. So where those legs come up. And those wings are right up, are attached right above that leg. That's where you want to shoot. Okay. Um, that is a a good shot 
that's your best shot on a turkey. Um, but on a turkey, you have some other shot opportunities where you might not have them on other game. Um, if that bird, for me, on big game, courting away and broadside are my two shots. That's what I'm going to go for every time. For deer or elk or something like that. Yeah. yeah. On a turkey, you've got a few more options because, A, it's not as thick. B, it's it doesn't have the skeleton and the hide and the fat that those big game have. Okay. So on a turkey, if he's coming straight on, if he's coming straight at your face, you can shoot him right above where the beard joins the body. So right here to both sides of that beard, okay. you've got a decent shot. It's going to break his neck, clog him up. you got a good shot. Is that a chance of cutting your beard off? <laughs> oh, yeah. It happens. It definitely happens. Uh. Um, and then the other shot that you, that you can have that people um, – that I'm okay with taking. It'll kill him. It's a good shot. When he is walking, not in strut, dead away from you, you can see a good line coming straight up his back. Okay. Um, yeah. And if you have the shot, you can shoot that. Because if you're in a chair in a ground blind, you're going to be a little above him. So that arrow is going to be flying in a little bit Slide downward angle. motion. Yeah. Um, and if you come in right there in the center of his back, you'll break his spine, and that arrow is going to go into the cavity and take care of business. What happens on a turkey, and why a lot of guys lose a turkey, on a broadside shot, they're above it. That I mean, that the vitals on that bird are so low. They're they're I mean, literally, they're right above the legs. Okay. So you really sink that arrow down in there. If you're if you're a hair below where that wing bone joins the body. You should be in the money. Yeah. So, and that's that's a tight window. It is. That's I mean, a, that's even a tough shot. I would say is trying to hit the head because I mean, you know, the vitals are it's a tight spot. Oh yeah. If he, I mean, if, but it just doesn't move quite as much. <laughs> right. As you're saying the head right. bobbing around. Yeah. No. I mean, of course, like we talked about before the show, the head shot is cool. It yeah. makes for a great video <laughs> footage, but um, slow motion. Your your safest bet, in my opinion, is going to be. A vitals down in the body uh -huh. shot, just it's it's down there. It's low. Just keep that in mind. Well, you, uh, I think that covers the arrows. That's awesome. I I think um, those mechanical ones are cool, and they're going to really do the job on a turkey. I would say too. Yeah, I think you'd be okay either way, wouldn't you think? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Because it's uh, you know, anyway. So set up in the woods. I'm thinking. We talked about it a little bit, but with a gun, mm -hmm. you can you can pretty much run a gun, right. get set up, get behind some brush or something. Yeah. It's going to be a little bit harder with a, with a bow. What would you suggest? And we've talked a little bit about it, but just a little bit more in depth on how you'd get set up with a bow. If you're not using a ground blind in the woods, you got to keep the cover between you and the bird. Um, the When I shot mine in the woods with a bow, <clears throat> he was coming down a fence row. I was calling him. I was set up behind a big, huge oak tree. So the the field and the fence rows, you, this mic's my oak tree, and I'm sitting like this, just waiting on him to ease down. Yeah. Now, I'd already been busted twice this same morning by Jake's, okay? And I just wanted to kill one with a bow, so I was going to shoot Jake. I didn't care. So he's coming along. And he's in and out of strut. He's gobbling. He's doing it. And I'm like, man, if I can get this killed. He walks behind the tree. When he goes behind the tree, I draw. My decoy was set up over here. So he had to cross me to get to the decoy. Perfect spot then. Yeah. yeah. When he came past the tree, I was drawn. And you would have thought I killed a 180 whitetail. <laughs> I was so excited. <laughs> but I like objects between where that bird is where I think that bird's going to go. Yeah. And and kind of like whitetail hunting, draw with an object between you and that bird if you're going to run and go. Yeah, I, I can see that. That That's pretty neat, using that to your advantage. You can kind of peek around it and, yeah. and use it mm -hmm. in between times. That's neat. You mentioned a decoy. I was curious what your thoughts are on decoys. I very rarely use them. Okay. Very that's the rarely. same thing I've heard yep. quite Ex frequently. Actually, if I'm hunting um, the timber – You'll probably never see me put one out. Um, if I'm hunting a field, I might put one out. Mm -hmm. 
And then the other time that I may put one out is if I've hunted the same gobbler for a couple of days, I know it's the same gobbler and he's just not doing it. I might put a Jake and I may not even hit a hen call. I may put a Jake out and Jake gobble at him and see what he does. Mm -hmm. um, if he's not doing it with a hen call, then I'm going to try to get a little more aggressive and go to, hey, man, there's another dude in here wanting to, wanting to get with your ladies. Like, yeah. come and whoop him. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that works. And then there's been times where I've killed him um, not even making a call. That's, that's like, my next question. Do you, do you call often or do you no. wait? Do you, do you try, you know, you no, set I'm it a, out? I, I am a firm believer you can over call a turkey. Mm -hmm. um, there are some guys that kill turkeys all the time and constantly call at them. I don't. I was taught how to turkey hunt by a guy named Dan Faulkner in Chattanooga, old school turkey hunter, and he threatened to take my calls a few times. <laughs> so uh, I learned from him, yeah. and honestly, he's one of the best turkey hunters I know, honestly. Um, first bird I ever shot with him, he called at him one time, just a little tree yelp, and when I seen that, I was like, well, I don't need to call a thousand yeah, times. Yeah, right. So, yeah. Um, but no, I do not call a lot, man. I just I have them with me, but I don't call like some people do. That's cool. Yeah, I, that's I've heard that a lot. We we we've done a series with Matt Dale Outdoors. I don't know if you're yeah. familiar with Matt Dale, but he came on and did a virtual series with us, and he said some of the same things. Right. Uh, so that's that's cool that it's pretty consistent. Uh, that's a good yeah. tip. The I mean, the biggest bird I ever shot had eight beards, and it was in Murray County, and they didn't gobble one time that morning. And I, I knew there was a couple in there. Never got one. Wow. I sat on this logging road, and I called four to five yelps every 45 minutes. And at 10 o'clock, he walked by me and shot him. So They'll sneak in on you. Yeah. yeah. You don't hear them coming. Well, this has been fun. I think a lot of good information. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, crossbow, compound, doesn't matter. Sure. You're not going to adjust the weight. Just keep your, you know, be consistent. Right. Uh Make a good choice on a broadhead. You should be successful this turkey. That's season. right. Hey, about the governor's one shot. Yes. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up. I, the governor's one shot has been backed up a week uh, because of Easter. So make right. sure you check your calendar. 9th and 10th, I believe, is that Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. I'll look at my calendar weekend just to after, make sure. Weekend after opening weekend. That's it. Yeah. April 9th and 10th, uh, that weekend. So the hunt will be on the 10th, I guess. Okay. But anyway, yeah, check your calendar if you're going to be a part of that just to let you know that. And uh, Logan, I appreciate you. Yeah, man, I had a blast as always. Look forward to coming back. It was fun. Yeah, turkey season is here, so get out there, buy your license, visit GoOutdoorsTennessee.com, or get, download the app, get your license, and get out there and enjoy the great outdoors. We thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Stay connected with TWRA by visiting our website at tnwildlife.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hey, it's all about Tennessee wildlife. It's what we do. Tennessee Wildcast will be on the air again next week. We'll see you then.